Hello, and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Polio Experts. Today, we are here with Dr. Nixi gumede uh regional virologist for polio eradication in WHO's African region. Uh, Nixi, welcome, and thank you for taking the time to be with us. Maybe for our audience, could you just explain what you do uh, here in the African Regional Office for WHO? Thank you so much, Olivia. Um, actually, my name is Nick, yeah, Dr. Nixi Kumete Muelezi. I'm a regional virologist, but uh, specializing on the molecular virology in a discipline of medical virology. So I've been here in WHO. I joined WHO in 2013, uh, focusing on the polyviruses. And that is where my specialty of becoming a virologist came from. Okay, thank you. So you're a virologist. Uh, basically, you look at the poliovirus. You look at, I believe, the genetics of the polioviruses. W what does that mean and why, why do we need to do that? Okay. So one thing that we have actually gathered as virologists is the mere fact that once you get the genetic information of any virus, that can actually help you to actually to find out how is that virus actually emerged and how it actually finally causes whatever outbreaks or diseases that is actually causing. So, so far, the genetic information for the polio viruses have actually aided the polio eradication program in a manner that it managed us to know whether the virus was imported from another country to the African region or is our own indigenous genotype that is actually circulating in, in our own region in Africa. Interesting. So a any polio virus you find, you can identify where it's from, whether it's locally or even if it came in from the other side of the, of the world? That is so true. If I can share with you some of the experiences that we actually had, that was in 20, 2005, where we actually find a virus that was circulating in Angola. And that was actually the first genotype that the Africa region actually experienced at that time. So when we actually blasted to all other viruses or in our viruses in our uh, database in the African region, it was actually discovered that that virus was actually linked or coming from the India. So that was the first experience in Africa to have a genotype that is not our own indigenous genotype, but it was a genotype that was coming from India. So since then, we have been actually seeing the increase of, uh, of, of, of other genotype in our country, but with the use of our specialized uh, vaccine for polio eradication, we have actually made a tremendous improve in our region for decreasing the number of wild poliviruses that are circulating. As of today, there hasn't been any wild polivirus that is circulating in the African region. And, and with, that, with that information, once you know where a virus came from and what its properties are, does that help you in formulating immunization strategies or surveillance strategies? What, what do you do with that information? That is a very good question, Oliver. Normally, once we actually receive an information that there is a kind of a virus that is circulating in a particular region within our continent, this is an information that is our epidemiologist or our program needs for them to ensure that they go to that particular area to do the vaccination, to control the outbreak to, for, for it not to spread further to affect other uh, kids or other adults that might be affected by the polio virus. So it actually allows you to work in a, in a much more targeted way, is, 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 is that correct? That is so true, that is so true, because the timeline to make sure that whatever virus that has been identified, we try to control its outbreak as soon as possible. So the minute to get the information of the genetic of that virus and then how dangerous it is, that's where the team of the people or the team of our epidemiologists has to go to that particular area to do the vaccination to control the spread of the virus. So you just mentioned uh, how dangerous it is. So this also allows you to tell, is it a uh, Sabin strain? Is it a vaccine-derived strain? Is it a wild strain? It differentiates? That's correct. So the, 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 the genetic information is so critical in a sense that it can actually tell you what kind of a strain of a, of a polyvirus is actually being identified. So if it's a Sabin strain, we are not having that worry because we know that once you have given a child the oral polio vaccine, the child is expected to, ex to share that vaccine to, 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 to the community. But of late, we are actually very critical what type of a, a strain, if it's a, if, if it's a Sabin 2, is quite a concern to the program because we know that um, 
we had a switch from a TOPV to a BOPV in 2015. And then at that time, we are not expecting any type 2 being circulating in the world or in the region unless the country has experienced maybe the outbreaks of the vaccine derived poliovirus of type 2. And then now they have to combat the outbreak response by the usage of a monovalent OPV2. Then, then in that particular country, is expected to, re to get any serotype to being actually identified by the laboratories. Fascinating. So it actually allows you to determine what tool, you, what vaccine uh, you want to go in with to, to, to combat. That is so, that is so correct, uh, Oliver, because once you know the serotype, it actually tell you or tells you what kind of a vaccine that you need to actually to use in that particular area to actually to do the vaccination. That's the work that you're doing to eradicate polio, which is fascinating. You're also uh, working to make sure that once polio is eradicated, it does not come back. You're working on something called containment. Uh, tell us about that. That, that's correct, Oliver. You know, the, 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 the process or the program of containment per se, I can say that the polio actually team, they've learned it from what actually happened during the eradication of a smallpox. So the, actually the leakage of a smallpox from the laboratory when it smallpox was eradicated, that actually made whatever disease that came after to make sure that something like that will never happen. So the polio now came with the, with the uh, strategy of, 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 of making sure that at the end of the eradication of polio, we mustn't actually see what we have seen in the smallpox saga. So that's where containment comes in. So containment now is we are trying to make sure that all these uh, uh, viruses of polio of polios that are actually kept in a specialized facilities because at that time will be only be left with what is known as the polio virus essential facilities which are currently known as a PEF. These are the facilities that were going to be the only facilities in the whole world after the eradication that they will be actually keeping any samples that is actually having a polio virus or infectious uh, potential infectious material for polio virus. So these are the facilities that at this point in time we are actually trying to actually to, to, to groom them or to select them worldwide and uh, in our region here Oliver just to mention to you we actually have got one country that have actually shown an interest to actually to host such a facility that is actually in South Africa and the National Communicable Diseases is a laboratory that has actually shown interest to be actually one of the PEF so in the entire region we're going to be actually having one PEF that can actually be able to store or to keep uh, these uh, polio viruses that might be of a threat to the community after the eradication. And so do they, d does this one facility need to implement special safeguards to make sure that the polio virus does not escape from, uh, from its facility? Absolutely, absolutely, Oliver, because once you actually have that kind of a, a, of a situation, we need to make sure now the facility is no longer operating under biosafety level two. They need to be upgraded to biosafety level three, of which the, the biosafety level three is quite actually a very critical level because it's got a very strict access control. So whoever will be actually handling or manipulating this kind of viruses will, ha will be having a limited access to enter those facilities and of course nobody else can enter except them. So they are actually trying to put the containment at a level that it's got a very limited access to avoid any leakage from the laboratories to the community. Okay, so that's for the, for the facility which will plan to keep and all those others uh, so you're basically working with countries to identify any lab that might have polyvirus and, and how do you go about that how many labs are there so in our region we're actually having 16 polio laboratories that are specifically working on the poliviruses and then these are the actually the culprit for any other polio material, but also for containment, we are on not looking only on the polio uh, laboratory. So we are looking at all the public health laboratories that they might have actually the potential infectious materials. Even though they might, they might say they we are not working with polio, but we know, for instance, if we are talking about the rotavirus, they are also having the samples like stool samples. Even though they select their virus of interest, but the, 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 the thing is the material that they're actually handling might actually have the poten potential infectious material for polio. So in such a manner that for the polio-specific laboratories, once they've actually received the sequencing results or the genetic information results of that particular virus that they've actually identified, 
we've actually put an algorithm that within 72 hours after they've actually received the results for sequencing, they need to destroy those material. So by that, we are trying to make sure that even if the poliovirus has been identified, but there is no trace that apparently the, the, the virus itself or the original material can actually be leaked from the laboratory to the actually to the community. So the only laboratories that will be left having any trace of poliovirus are indeed the PEFs, which is poliovirus essential facilities. And that will of course be controlled in that area. That's correct. That's correct, Oliver. That's very correct. Uh, it's it's fascinating uh, all the work that you are doing to to eradicate polio, but then to make sure that it it also stays stays eradicated. Uh, uh, thank you so much for the work that you're doing and and for taking the time to to speak with us uh, this uh, this morning. Uh, and thank you to our audience. And please join us again for another edition of Coffee with Polio Experts. Thank you. Thank you so much, Olivia. Really appreciate to be with you guys. Thank you.